For those of you who know me, you know that when I start telling a story, I can go on forever. So I'm going to try to make this intro as short as possible. Being a journalist without a job here in Los Angeles, I feel like I need to create, I need to document, I still need to be a storyteller, and not having a job yet, fingers crossed, very hopeful, not having a job yet, I want to um, to still tell people stories in the best way I can, and being an Uber driver... I interact with random people all day, every day, and I've gotten some really good stories just because I'm a conversationalist. I like talking to people, and I've wanted to record these stories kind of like I wish I had a, um, a microphone, you know, an audio recorder with me so that I could interview and document these stories that people tell me. So I thought, I have an iPad. I have microphones, can't really see. I have a back that I was using when I was still reporting so that I could go live on on Facebook with my phone. Anyway, I have these microphones and I thought, you know what? Why don't I just start inter- interviewing people in my car? And I started doing it back in February. I wanted to make a um a series for my I Love Love project. My stepdad sent me a bouquet of flowers and all it said was, follow your heart. You know exactly what you need to do and what you should do. I love you and I'm proud of you. And my stepdad has never been one to overly express his love. I realized that people don't necessarily like being on camera. That's something I knew already. But if I just audio record them, they're a little bit more comfortable with it. So I've gotten some really great stories so far, and I'm gonna share the first one with you today, and I'm going to try to upload at least one a week from here on out. So I hope you enjoy my first in my Uber interviewing series called Tell Me a Story. It's a concept that I adopted my senior year of college, and, um, if you look on my YouTube, I have videos. This is the first time it's going to be just audio, but it's kind of hard putting video cameras in my car and getting the sound right. So um, this will have to do now. And I think it, it gives the people in my car um, the opportunity to be anonymous. And I'm hoping just to be more comfortable in sharing a story when they know that they're not on camera. So I hope you enjoyed this first guy, this first interview that I'm going to share with you. His name is Jose. He's 29 from Washington, D.C. And just a warning, there is some explicit language um, ideas. And you'll learn a little bit about me and my journey of love and about some of my exes. So um, enjoy. You have like questions? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Um, what's your name? Where are you from? Oh, all right. are we starting? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm Jose. I'm from DC. Okay, how old are you? 29. Okay. So yeah, um, I put the sign up in my car. You know, just the it reads, "Tell me a love story" or "Love Story Challenge." Um, what made you want to <laughs> ask about it? Do you have a story you want to share about love? I don't think I have like a. a a specific love story but because like i don't know i think i like i can like fall in love every day you know what i'm saying how so it's just like i love so much and i have so much like i could just see someone today and be like oh my god i love her and then like <laughs> it, but it's just as true as like a girl that i've known for like years you know what i'm saying i love her too okay. like i still love all my all my exes, I, exes I still love have? them. Like four, four. I have four exes myself. Do you still love them? I do. I think I was only in love with two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I loved, I loved all of them at the time. Yeah. And I want to be friends with all of them. I'm not necessarily friends with all of them. Right. But I thought they were all special people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I made them that title for a reason. Right. Um, yeah, man, I still definitely love all of them. Are you in love right now? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I love, yeah, definitely. What's her name? Um, Madalena. Tell me about her. <laughs> but I love like, 
But I feel like it's like equal love throughout like, I don't know, man, like just like a few people, you know? But, um, so are you in like a polyamorous relationship? Or no, 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 no. Well, we don't really have like a super title. She's like a open, she's like from Spain. So she's okay. just like um, here for like until January. Okay. She's been here, are here for like a few months already. So it's one of those type of things, okay. you know? I, I so guess, we're like exclusive, but we know that she's like, leaving, you know? She's going back to Spain. Oh, wow. When does she leave? In January. One thing I like to ask people is, when did you first know you loved her? Tell me about it. What was the moment like? What was, what were you guys doing where it clicked? Like, oh my gosh, I love this person. Um, I, I don't know. I guess it was probably like, we were like texting and she made a joke about like something I said, like it's kind of graphic, but she just made a joke about something I said, like, oh, that just like made me wet. But like, <laughs> it was really funny. So I was like, oh man, yeah, I definitely love her. And that was like the second day. Okay. So you said it's easy for you to fall in love? Oh yeah, for sure, yes. man. Like, you know what I mean? I could meet somebody today and be like, yeah, definitely like, love her i think love is just something that's so like easy for me because i think at yeah. its core it's just like caring well, it's, about the other person's well-being yeah people make it more complicated than it really is you know what i'm saying it's just a feeling honestly you know just like happy is like uh happy is kind of like a verb you know it's something you kind of you gotta be in the action of happy like to, it's not it's not like love where it's just like a feeling like yeah. you know what i mean so that feeling can come and go and come back and like be around for a while. This is not that complicated for me. So, I mean, you have the rest of May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's eight more months of loving this girl. Yeah. What happens in January? I don't know, man. That's a great, that's a good question. Have um, you talked about it? Um, not really, kind of. I mean, she's just like, yeah, well, I mean, she's going back to Spain. Obviously, she's going to have to go back home, so. Um, you want to be in a long-distance relationship? No, nah, that's, like, unrealistic for the both of us. We know it's probably not going to happen that way. Okay. So it's just like a, it is. it does feel like kind of like a countdown situation. You just don't know what's going to happen, but... But you guys are exclusive, so you're yeah, not yeah. having sex with anybody else. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it's exclusive, for sure. That's special in itself. Yeah, definitely. This is like a taxi cab confession, but <laughs> I like yeah, it. I, 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 like, um, I like talking to people. Like, yeah, you know, like, it's uh, cool, man. It's cool. I want to make people feel comfortable. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what happens, though. Like, I guess we'll see, you know. I try to tell her not to think of, think that far ahead, but I guess you kind of have to, but it's just one of those things, it's just better to stay in the middle about it, you know? Yeah. So are you just kind of enjoying where you are right now? And just taking yeah, it yeah, away? yeah, exactly. I mean, I let myself indulge in, like, extravagant thoughts also. How so? But, you know, like, oh, I could go to Spain and, like, live this crazy <laughs> life, you know? And then I also think um, she's just going to leave and then we'll talk like once a month and then we'll start talking like once every three months and then that'll be like the end of that. And just like think about both just to balance my mind out, you know. That's smart. That's how you got to do it. I don't know, Miles. If you said that you can fall in love every day, that's eight months of falling in love with the little things about her every day. Yeah, no, that's a lot. But, yeah. <laughs> I um I dated a guy and we first started dating when I was living in Florida. Mm. I did the Disney college program. Oh yeah, that's cool. And we met in like gosh like September. Mm. And by October we were already like official. Oh wow, and, it was pretty quick. Um, so, yeah. So like I, I knew that like I wanted be more than just a friend with him. Right. And, um, so I knew that I was going to be leaving in January to go back to Texas where I'm from. 
Oh man. So um, similar just, situation. Like, broke up before I even moved. It was like you know, the idea was, why don't we just kind of stop this? Because before it happened. Before, yeah. You know, like let's just try to be friends and ultimately you know i think for a week or two you know he wasn't spending the night or anything yeah after after so long it's just like this is stupid let's enjoy the time that we have yeah exactly (laughs) exactly it's completely that's just completely pointless because again you you just never know what that's you like trying to predict the future and trying to make something happen it never works when you try to do that so let's just stay where you know stay here we um we were basically boyfriends without the title since we had broken up. And yeah. When I came back to Texas, when I moved back to Texas um, for a good month, we barely talked. Oh, really? And then after a month, I was like, I, I miss you. He's like, I miss you too. And I'm like, I guess we're going to be in a long distance relationship. Yeah. And oh, ultimately, yeah. It, ended, it ended up crumbling. Yeah. Because um, long distance relationships absolutely suck. Yeah. And, it's like but, impossible, uh, man. It's almost impossible. Would you be willing to dive into one for this girl if after eight months she says, look. Oh, for sure. But I mean, I know, like those rarely work but again you like never know you know i don't like to speculate on on the possibilities uh, you know until i'm in there so you never know i mean maybe it could work you know stranger things have happened so (laughs) i agree like i I basically am a believer in that just like any everything and anything has happened so it could definitely happen again you know Yeah, man. We'll see how it goes. What do you want for your future as far as um, a relationship goes? Do you want to be married with kids? Do you never want kids? Um, Yeah, I definitely want kids. I definitely want kids, and, like, I definitely want... um, I don't really want, like, a... I want, like, baby mothers, honestly. That sounds really terrible, but... Baby, like a baby mother's. Like I'd want like kid, my kids' mothers, but not necessarily to. I want like two, maybe like two different moms. You know what I'm saying? No, explain it. Like I have, like one kid by this one, and then another kid by this one. Okay. You know like what I mean? All living together? No, no. They kind of like live their own lives and like do their own thing. You know what I mean? Maybe like we just didn't work out or something. But they're like great moms to my kids. You know what I mean? Have you found anybody that's open to that? No, no one's ever going to be open to that. (laughs) It just seems very counterproductive, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's like having two families and then everybody can like come together, you know. It could be nice. Do you just like the idea of being a dad? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think being a dad would be cool. Just to like be able to mold a human, you know? Raise a kid, like... I agree. I, I think being a dad is one of my main dreams when it comes to the future. Yeah. Is it, do you think it's because, like, we want to do, like, what our parents didn't? Or... I have really wonderful parents. Yeah. <laughs> like, my dad... So maybe it's just like you want to give a kid yeah, that experience exactly. that you had. That's what yeah. it comes from for me, yeah. because I had such a wonderful childhood with a dad who tried his very best to provide for me. My dad did not have a good childhood at all. Oh, really? Uh, my dad's father walked out on eight kids. Damn. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Um, when my dad crazy. was like in elementary school, I think my dad was like in the first grade when his dad left. And wow. he never came back. That's absurd. You could see his dad, like, you know, every couple of months, if that, and as he got older, it was like, you know. Why did he do that, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know, to be honest with you. It just kind of. He left my grandmother for another woman and kind of made a family with her. But to leave eight Eight children. Yeah, the story goes, oh, 
I guess this will be interesting to anybody listening to this, um, as just as far as like where I got my name from. Mm -hmm. So I'm Loopy the Third. Okay. And uh, my grandfather was Loopy. Uh -huh. And um, so all of my dad's siblings, all seven before him, uh -huh. have names that starts with R's. Really? So it was Randy, Ruben, Ralph, Richard, um, Rudy. Rita and Ruby. I think I repeated names there. Anyway, yeah, the seven before yeah, him, yeah. they were all R's, and That's my dad crazy. was supposed to be Rocky. Right. So when my grandmother went into labor and went to the hospital, mm -hmm. he wasn't there. So my grandmother, at like a last, you know, nudge to him, like this mm -hmm. is your kid, named my dad after him. Damn. So your like, dad like, to, uh -huh, you to, leave me? to seal the deal. Son. And I don't know if he resented that or what. Um, I don't really know where the story goes from there. I know I think he was angry because he had decided on the name Rocky. Wow. And um, yeah, I was named Loopy after after my dad because my dad liked the idea of you know carrying on the tradition. Your first name is Loopy. Yeah, Guadalupe. Oh, I've oh yeah. I've been my Loopy my whole life for Guadalupe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, where you? What's your uh, nationality? What are your parents' nationality? Oh, uh, Mexican. Both um, of them. But yeah, both parents and all four of my grandparents were born in Texas. So oh, okay. I'm multi generational into Texas. Right. Or, you know, Texas. Texas was Mexico. Yeah, I never been there. That's crazy, man. So, yeah. so you got a huge family, huh? Yeah, I have a lot of a lot of um, uncles, two aunts on one side. So my mom, my dad is one of eight, and my mom is one of seven. Okay. So I have a huge. Damn. Family. Yeah. That's crazy. It was nice having all of the cousins. I love my cousins yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. It's great having good cousins. Yeah. And you, what is, I guess, what is your story? So I want to have kids because I had such a wonderful influence from a father. Yeah. Um, why do you want kids? Um, I don't know. I think I just, um, um, I don't know. I think I want to just be able to, like, see myself in, like, someone smaller, you know? Okay. <laughs> just to see myself in someone else and, like, I guess, like, once you, like, live and you, like, see the mistakes and things you made, it's like, man, if I could tell somebody how to do this the right way, that would just, like, create a great person. So it's like, I think that's probably the main reason, you know. Yeah, I haven't really thought about it, like, as much as I should. Well, like, thankfully, I don't have any, or, I mean, I'm not, like, no one's pregnant or anything, so. <laughs> but, like, I have a friend with, like, seven kids, and he's, like, my age. There's, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Does he have to be child support for all seven of those kids? No, I don't think so. Wow. But, I mean, he makes it work, though, but it's got to be difficult. I mean, like, he's in all his children's lives and all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, I guess the idea of having having children with multiple women, I mean, people do that, you know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. that's I mean, that's something that happens. Yeah, are I think if you scared? can, like, take care of your kids, it's like... Yeah, are you scared, though, that those children would feel a sense of, like, abandonment because they wouldn't have you? You know, like, as a nuclear family, you know that's popularized you know in america you know a mom and a dad and a, yeah, a but, house and a kid and a dog you know yeah i need to think more about it but i'm just like i mean are you convinced like that has to be the only way you know what i mean i don't think it's the only way it's at just all. yeah it's it's because there's just like so many like like going back to the to the everything has happened and, and you know all these experiences people have had, it's just like every, any possibility is possible. You can have a kid who was raised in the most perfect family and then come out to be, you know, um, some serious issues, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you can have a kid who comes from like nothing and has been seeing abuse and been around terrible things, come up and just be like a great human being and give back and all that, you know what I mean? So it's like, the, like who knows what the formula is to like, make a 
raise a good, I guess it's just like love, you know what I mean? I think if your kid has enough love, like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if, I mean, it matters that you obviously have to be in their lives to show them that love, but like the fact that they have like a brother or sister that has a different mother, it's like what that shouldn't mean anything really, you know? How would you define love? Could you define love? Um, ah, man, that's a good question. It's so hard to, it's, I guess it's like one of those things that's like hard, but really easy to define because it's like, it's like the best and then it sucks also. It's like drugs or something. Like, honestly, you shouldn't even indulge into love too much. Because it is like a, you know, it's a desire. You know, you want to love somebody. You want to be. You sound like you're contradicting yourself. You said. I know. I probably am. (laughs) I I probably am. But now that I think about it, it's like, well, I really shouldn't indulge in it as much as I do, because it becomes an attachment. You know, like a drug. It becomes a drug. Have you broken a lot of hearts in falling in love so fast? Oh, for sure. You know, definitely. Definitely. So yeah, it can become like a, you know, you can take advantage of it It, it, because it has a lot of super highs, you know what I mean? And then it has like really tough lows also. So it's definitely something that can be abused. And I have. I went to LA in August Mm -hmm. and in October I met a guy and after just I kid you not, dude. After a week, mm-hmm. I already knew that I wanted him in my future. Yeah, I yeah. Just, I thought, you know, a year from now, this guy will be. We'll still be here. We'll still be here. Yeah. And he completely led me to believe that that would be true. Right. I mean, he was telling me things like, "You're exactly what I'm looking for," and. I think you're so beautiful and um, you know, all the right things to all say. the right things. I mean, I was so excited just after a week. Yeah. And then into the second week, he got really flaky. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the second week, we went out to lunch that he was late for. Mm-hmm. And he basically told me, he apologized and said, you know, I think I do this a lot. Oh, I damn. I think that, um, you know, I, I fall, you know, fall fast. Yeah. And he said, you know, I think maybe I need to see a therapist. And Damn, and you're like, you're fucking right. Yeah, and he had the audacity to say, you know, when I finally get things sorted out, you'll be one of the first ones or the first one I reach out to. Oh, man. And you know what, man? I Yeah, that's crazy. I, I feel so stupid even now in saying that, like, if he were to call me today and ask me mm-hmm. out to dinner, he probably would go. I'd probably say yes. Yeah. Because I thought he was so special. Like, but maybe he is. You know what I mean? Don't count that out. I, I don't but, want to. Yeah. But I just I've I've experienced so much rejection in my life that I just don't want to entertain it anymore. Yeah. Like if somebody shows me that they're not interested, I just want to. Yeah. Accept it, you know, and right, move on. Right. Right. Now you're right. Um, but that's the thing about love too, like. As high as it, as quickly and as high as it goes, it is as quickly as it will go yeah. down. Yeah. So you have to be weary of those situations I'm when like, you're just I, like I, I, I mean, instantly like, oh, this shit is so amazing. Yeah, It'll going, just be just as shitty next week. <laughs> well, going into it, I, I remember like sitting down with myself and being like, you know, you need to brace yourself for impact because this is going to like crash or burn. Yeah, that's good. I, that's I good. I felt that it felt too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm a lover, you know. Right. And I was like, this, this is stuff right this here. This is it. It happens. This is, this is, you know, what love is. Right. It happens that fast. And yeah, I'm that's so another thing because you don't really know exactly what it looks like. So it's like, maybe this is really it. You know what I mean? No, I was, I was so ready to make this guy my boyfriend. I mean, I told all of my friends and family, like, I found him. Yeah. I moved here to LA hoping to find a guy. Yeah. And I found him. Right. And um. How do you feel about like like the apps and stuff? Like, do you, I use every single one of them. Do you think you'll fall in love with someone you from know, an app? I've have had, you? Said I've had four boyfriends. Right. My second boyfriend, I met off an app. Yeah. I met on an app called Grinder. Okay. And um, I 
love to. Yeah. I, I mean, we're still friends. We don't talk nearly as much as I'd like to, but right. I thought he was wonderful. So yeah. yes, I think it's possible. Yeah, I, I went like, back and best forth. Best friends on the grinder, you know. Really? Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, I go back and forth with it. Like for a time, I used to think, nah, I man, I could never like be with the girl that I met on the internet. But then I'm like, at the same time, it's like this is the future. I mean, this is the time we are in. Like, this is how you meet people, whether you like it or not. This is how people are open to meeting you and meeting each other. You know what I mean? So, it can work. Yeah, I, um, I met. That being said, though, the same guy who I feel burned me and they yeah. fall for him. Not made me fall for him. I can't blame him for that. Yeah. Um, I met him on Grinder. Yeah, you know that I mean? shit toughens you up, though. Like, after, in the beginning, it's like you, you think. I don't know, like, it, I, it definitely took a couple times of me getting, like, rejected and, like, ghosted to be like, oh, this means nothing until I meet you. And, like, things are real. You know? I feel like I'm jaded in a way that I wasn't. For sure, place, for you know? sure, yeah, definitely. Dude, thank you so much for talking to me. We yeah, just man. to your location. All thank right. you for being on Tell Me a Story. Can I get a picture with you before you leave it to use okay. as the cover of the video? Oh, sure, all right. Okay. <laughs> You can just take off the mic and just let it dangle. Thanks so much, man. You made my day. That was the, like I said, the second interview I've ever had. Yeah. 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 Dude, it was so nice meeting you. Thanks, man. Nice you have a good you one. Too, bro. I hope this stuff with this girl works out. Yeah, man. I hope you get your job and shit looks up. That's a dream, man. Oh, shit. My phone. Have a good one. Night, you too. Bye. So this guy just got out of my car. Um, he, I can't tell if he was a high or not. He was kind of <laughs> talking as if he were being stoned the entire time. Really nice guy. Handsome guy. And, um, yeah, has some really, um, interesting, um, viewpoints on love that I think I share with him. I, I don't want multiple kids from, you know, multiple people, <laughs> or with multiple people, but, um, I'm hoping that doing this project that I'm doing, this Tell Me a Story project, that I just kind of uncover what love means to an array of different people and being an uber driver gives me that opportunity to meet an array of different kind of people so this being the first one i upload i i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll continue on um, trying to to get people to speak openly with me you know as a journalist as a storyteller i feel like i have to keep This is my way right now. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And